we go. All right, here we are again. It is May 8th, and that means we've officially finished one week of the Mouth Breathing Awareness Month campaign for the month of May. So what I'm trying to do is spread the awareness of myofunctional issues and sleep disordered breathing and tongue ties and all of the things that I work with patients for during myofunctional therapy. That's what I'm trying to spread the awareness of. And today I have Mavish Khan. She is a dental hygienist <laughs> and myofunctional therapist from the San Francisco Bay Area. And you're going to share your story because we're all sharing our stories. And the hope is that if we can share our stories as healthcare providers, then our patients might actually be able to understand how common and widespread all of these health issues really are even though they're not mainstream and they're not typically recognized in dentistry and, and medicine. So welcome, Mavish. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah so do you wanna just start off, you, tell us a little bit about you and your background, how you got into myofunctional therapy and we'll go from there. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Yeah, yes. so um, I practice, I've been pra I'm still practicing hygiene, so I've been practice, practicing hygiene for over 18, 14 years. I don't know why I said 18, 14 years. 14? Okay. <laughs> 14 You're so wise. Years. You have so much knowledge. And... It, I know it just goes by. I think I'm adding other stuff to it, but yeah, I know uh, 14 years and I absolutely love it. And um, about four and a half years ago, I was introduced to upper airway resistance through my office that I work at. And when we started looking at um, airway, uh, we do realize it's, it's an issue. A lot of people don't know they, they have problem. And we can catch things. We can, we're looking in their mouths all the time. And so doctor always wanted to be very proactive about looking at overall health. And um, so that's um, the first time I was introduced to the airway. And the reason I'm mentioning that because that's how I became a myofunctional therapist because I start seeing those symptoms in my own son. Yeah, which so is the story you're gonna talk about. So yes, yeah. yeah. So I remember we were sitting there and she gave us a piece of tape and asked us to all put our like lip put um put tape on our lips and I'm like wow that's like interesting and yeah. we thought it was funny at the time but she basically what we were trying to do is like can we breathe through our nose you know mm -hmm. air and all that so we were watching videos and I'm looking at it and I'm like I'm watching it but why does it look or sound so familiar like I already know this stuff and it yeah. was like, firsthand I was seeing it every day with my son wow open mouth posture and when we were talking about kids and jaw development and droopy eyes and elongated face and stuff given he didn't have all of those but open mouth mouth breathing was always there low tongue posture so I was like oh my god like you know so got him to got him into ortho early on I highly encourage parents getting kids into ortho before they turn seven because yeah. that's when your jaw is really fully upper arches jaw is developed so it's really important to get the airway open um, and I remember he my son just turned six and I took him to orthodontist um, by our area. He's also very airway driven, Dr. Abar. Amazing guy. We got him in and we started ortho. We did the expansion. So at this point I was like, okay, well now we did everything. I did the ortho and how come he's still mouth breathing? That's such a good point you bring up. People don't realize that just because you make more space, doesn't mean the mouth will close, right? So exactly, yes. I love that you're bringing that up because I don't think any of the interviews have actually mentioned that. Like we can change the structure with the nose or the palate or the jaws, but if you don't retrain the muscles and the breathing, that's not going to change, right? Yes, and that was the missing piece. That was the missing hey. piece of the puzzle. So, and we're like, and I remember sitting with Dr. Kwan, and we're like, he's tongue thrusting. He's still mouth, like, you know, we were monitoring him, like, you know, he's still mouth breathing. And so then we were like, hold on a second. Then we came across myofunctional therapy and Dr. Kwan and I were really excited. And I was like, you know, I want to do this. And she really encouraged me to do it. And from there, and it was because I wanted to help my son. And yeah, it, it, it made great. a difference. It made and a difference. We should give your office a little bit of a shout out because I remember I met you guys at, a, it was an AOMT course and you yeah. were there with Dr. Kwan. Yes. And uh, I was there as like a guest lecturer. And uh, I mean, I think it's so cool that she's been so supportive of this and that mm -hmm. she's almost been pushing you and saying like, hey, let's let's do this together. And I know that you practice out of her office, right? But yes. you also have your own separate practice. So you guys are like working together like a really good team. Yes. Yeah. And she's always encouraging. She's always, they're always pushing. And it's, 
it's really nice. She does a lot on her, her end too. She's always taking courses on TMJ and airway yeah. because she's looking, she wants to not just treat teeth. She wants to yeah. look at overall health and she's very like um, good about doing extra classes and, and training the staff. Yeah. Often doctors train That's themselves. That's like the best type of dentist to work yeah. for and it's the best yeah. type of dentist to like go to as a patient. <laughs> yeah. You know, honestly, I'm lucky. I've been with them for 10 years now almost 10 yeah. years so yeah definitely it's a place to be at <laughs> yay um okay so he got the expansion but you still notice mouth breathing yes and then what was the next step like what did you guys start doing you got the myofunctional training did you dive I, right in with him as your first patient well i didn't he wasn't my first patient you think he would be but he <laughs> wasn't um i i had actually really good first patient very compliant patient and i wa i was able to do myo and i was like saw the results I then my son at the time still had the expand, expander and we were still like wanted to expand a little bit more and I couldn't get the tongue to the spot without with all the mind mm -hmm. stuff. So we had to wait for his myo, but he is. Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, yeah. that happens a lot with exactly. when you're working with orthodontic treatment and myofunctional therapy together. Sometimes there is a little bit of a like, you know, what do you do phase? Uh, with exactly. The tongue, so. and I, we tried, but he wasn't really getting it. Yeah. Um, because he couldn't get his tongue up because the appliance was preventing the palate and he couldn't feel the palate. So I said, you know what, let's expand first and then we'll do. And now he is doing myofunctional therapy. Good. And I see a big change. Yes, I do see it like um, has happened. And we have like little code word, like spot. He knows when Good. I say him in spot and he knows if like his mouth is open, he has to close it and the tongue goes to the palate. It's cute. We have these little code words to remind each other. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, did he, did you guys ever find out like what was the root, like what caused him to mouth breathe? Did he have like large tonsils and adenoids or allergies or do yeah. you know? Do you know? Yes. So I did take him to an ENT and this was before I, you know, like all of, we wanted to make sure everything. So it's very important to know everything. Like if you're not nose breathing, what is it? It's, do you have a low yeah. tongue posture? Is it tongue tied? is a nasal problem so like all this but so i took him to every specialty you can think of <laughs> he did have um in large, uh, like um adenoids and tonsils were not super but they were class two um the doctor the ent said to me give him some um, allergy medication do some nasal sprays and see how he does uh, because mm -hmm. he, you know if he stops mouth breathing the inflammation will go down so that's another thing like you know you want to look at everything so he didn't think there was serious obstruction at this point he wanted me mm -hmm. to just kind of treat it with medication bring the inflammation down and but when I started doing myo and I noticed that I then can breathe through his nose that's not an issue and we just need yeah. to work on tongue posture he has a really thick band he is tongue tied it's not just like a ah, okay a, that's probably more, more the root cause lot. Then. exactly yeah. um I was really hoping um I would see Dr. Zagi soon <laughs> with the COVID-19 shelter in place. I'm just hoping once all that opens, um, I will be contacting Dr. Zagi. Yeah, well, let us know. I mean, when you come down here, you have to hang out. So <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, Dr. Zagi comes down to Walnut Creek. That's as well. right, actually. So yeah. Hoping, but if that doesn't work, I'm willing to drive to LA to see him because he I have to see him. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, so you'll get the tongue tie release, continue the myofunctional therapy. You're working on expansion. I mean, you're doing all the things that like, ideally, I love it when patients can do this and when they can start young. So six years old, you're going to be guiding his growth. Every, his airway is going to develop amazingly. Um, and I think, you know, you're really setting him up for, for the best yeah. future possible for his health. So thank awesome. you. You know, Sarah, I do want to say one thing. I, when I started ortho, like, when I started him in ortho, like at age six, a lot of people would be like, why are you doing this? Cause they're so not, young. They're so young. I even had somebody say, oh, you must be getting this treatment for free. Cause you're in a dental field. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's not. I'm not I it. wish. <laughs> I know, right? But what I'm trying to say is like, people think you have to wait. Oh, you're too young when you start at six. You're not actually, they're missing. So we need to educate our patients and tell them we want to catch things early to prevent problems because once yeah. they're past certain age we can't do the same treatment we can't get the same yeah. extension and it really affects the facial development the long droopy eyes you know like elongated face droopy yeah, eyes all we that stuff want that so it's just the having the right profile not just looks good but also just you know like for their for their breathing for their health mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I also want to mention like his, you know, like since he was a baby, when he would even drink, like he always made a sound and now it all makes sense because yeah. when he was younger and I always want, my father in fact would always say, is he sick? Why did, why is he breathing heavy? Is he like, he sounds congested. And I'm like, he's not sick, you know, but I, I didn't know any better at that time, but I yeah. did notice a change between my son and my daughter. Like definitely the way he would even drink milk. It was like, he would have this tongue thrust. And um, mm -hmm. at that time, obviously I didn't know. I, there was nothing I could pinpoint. Pediatrician never said anything, but it was always there. And now that I know about this stuff, I can go back and be like, oh, that's what it was. The yeah. tongue thrust and the whole um, open my posture. And, you know, he's a great kid, listens, does, he's a very smart kid. But I tell you, when they don't get enough sleep, a quality oh. sleep, they wake up cranky. And the attention, you know, like mm -hmm. either if he gets it, great. If he doesn't get it, he doesn't have the patience. And I think it's all connected with how he was breathing and he wasn't getting the full rest. Now that he is yeah. getting a better good night's sleep, he's a different kid. You have noticed a difference like behavior wise, energy oh, yeah. wise, hyperactivity yeah. wise. What, what do you see? Like what was the before and what was the after? I felt like, I, I mean, again, he's very friendly, always good. And if my friends watch this video, they're going to like mock me later. They're like, oh, what are you talking about? You know, like he was so <laughs> like a perfect child. <laughs> but exactly. But, you know, like I just always saw like, you know, he, he's always good. It's not. But as a mother, as I learn more about it, I actually start noticing things. Yeah. Because if you don't know, then you don't know. But once you know things, you start noticing things. And mm -hmm. I could tell him like, I think, you know, like you, attention wasn't there. Like you could tell him, but. He was never, he was never paying attention to what you were saying and just never grasping. More like kind of zoning out or kind of just more foggy. Exactly. You just zone out. He just zoned, he zoned you out. And, you know, yeah. um, and at school, I mean, we're working on this, he talks a lot. And his teacher wouldn't say, agree with me if she watched this, this video. <laughs> so we're trying to get that, working on that too. Like, don't disturb. Because I feel like, you know, when the, you're tired and you just kind of distract yourself and you end up. Yeah, being, I, I've heard, um, I've heard that described actually, like a lot of kids who are extremely tired and fatigued will actually be the busy ones. They'll be the really active ones. They'll be the ones who are making jokes and, yes. you know, just causing, not necessarily that they're hyperactive, Yes. but they're busy and they're like really just trying to keep themselves moving so they don't fall asleep. Like they're really actually tired. I, I've heard that before. Yeah. And that's, that's Ivan. And the minute he lays down, he falls asleep within second. I'm not kidding you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take him time to fall asleep. He falls asleep. It's just, he's not getting good. He wasn't getting a good night's sleep. So that's and very, you can tell. Too. and as a hygienist working, talking to parents, um, the other thing I run into often is parents don't acknowledge it or don't realize, you know, like when you point out, they'll be like, no, no, my child is fine. I don't see an issue. They're fine. Yeah. They're yeah. snoring sometimes they're grinding their teeth. Sometimes for those parents, I feel like, you know, we need to be more proactive. Um, yeah. I, 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 you know, like obviously with more education it will be, but it's just, you know, there's nothing wrong with your child, but if there is something that's preventing them to get that good, nice sleep, let's try to help them and fix it. Yeah. No, that's such a good point too. And I know um, Melissa brought this up in her interview and a couple other people have talked about, we all are a little bit in denial in the beginning and this doesn't have to just be for us. It can be for our kids. Like a lot of parents, I don't think we want things to be wrong with our kids. Obviously. That's what it is. Yeah. You know? exactly. I, yeah. You know, um, and I, the, honestly, the classic example of my own, like my husband, like when I am all like learn about it and I'm going to do it, he's like, I think you're overdoing it. Seriously. I'm like, yeah. what? Because, you know, again, and I tell him, I said, just because, because, you know, he's not in health field. And I'm like, it's lack of knowledge on your end, knowing about this stuff. And I know it, and I can't watch him grow like that. I can't, you know, I don't want to be that parent knowing it. And I'm not, you, you know, like, I want to make sure he grows to be healthy, which he's a, not going to a very healthy kid. But I want to help him breathe better, sleep better. Yeah. And that, actually, I see that dynamic a lot um, with the parents. And yeah. it's typically the mom who's doing the research and the digging and yeah. learning all this stuff. Um, I can think of probably two dads that I've worked with who have been the, the parent doing that. But it, it's often a dynamic that I see in families where like one parent is like, this is so important. We need to do this. Look at all this evidence. Like, look at all yeah. this, this, this big, this is a big deal. And the other parent is like, if it was a big deal, then why would the doctors not be worried about it? You know, and so, it's so hard. Yep. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. hard.
but you know i do see a change in the industry oh, for sure i it think is. definitely going that way i hear more and more offices talking about airway which is great because that's yeah. you know that's very important and i think one of the things we we want to help our adult patients but we want to really catch things with our kids early on yeah. to prevent future problems yeah and i think i mean i'm hoping my hope is that videos like this putting yeah. out information parents can watch people can watch and you know i i really hope that by doing this now we can make it a little bit more you know here's another video here's some more content here's some more information yes. here's some more hygienists talking about this and maybe it'll help talking. some more people yeah 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 i know um because it's hard like nobody wants to talk about their kids and and, and again there's nothing wrong with these kids it's just like we want to make sure we give them optimal ability. health yeah. yeah yeah well i mean this is super helpful i think i i really think a lot of parents if they watch this they're going to relate to you and i think they're going to be inspired by you so i'm excited to share the video um why don't we talk about your practice um it is called well you you talk about it yeah, um, it's called Kwan and Jabor Dental, KNJ K &J Dental. Um, we are located in Walnut Creek, California, East Bay. That's your dental office? That's the dental office I work at. And um, I also see patients from that practice. And the, my own business is called Face Fitness OMT. Face Fitness OMT, awesome. So I hope people reach out to you and connect. I know California is kind of a hub for myofunctional therapy and um, you will see pe people in person uh, when things open back up. And then uh, you're still seeing patients right now um, via telehealth, right? Yes, I do. And that's that I st I'll do both. I, I, I can do both. So right now, currently, I'm seeing all my patients um, via. Cool. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your story. Um, I'm super happy to have you on. And uh, I can't wait to hang out again someday in person <laughs> <laughs> when we get the chance to. Um, but yeah, enjoy your day. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll be making more videos. So thank you right. so much, Sarah. Thank you for having okay. me. I want to give you a shout out too. I want to. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, I want to share this. I did my original um, myofunctional therapy at AOMT where I met you. And then a, lot, a year later, I did your myo mentor program. Um, which I'm so thrilled that I did. I learned so much from you. You're an amazing person. You're like in person too. And as a mentor, you, you, you really want to help and you share everything and possible. You really set everyone up for success. And I think that comes from deep passion that you have for myofunctional therapy because you want to help people out there. And I really, really appreciate that. Um, oh, thank you. you really do from heart. You can tell. And I really had a great time with your um, class during three month mentor program, and I would look forward to if our like call every. Oh, week. you're so sweet. You're like making me embarrassed and like maybe want to cry at the same time. <laughs> no, and I mean it. But I appreciate I really it. That's so nice. It. I really do mean it. Um, I really enjoyed it, and you're a great person, and I'm I I'm really thankful for our friendship too. Oh, thank you. Well, that is a, like the sweetest way to end the video ever. So I really appreciate the kind words, and yeah, I'm hoping you know we'll we'll get this spread and now everybody will get to hear some nice things about me too so everybody regardless where they did myofunctional therapy training initially but i think everybody should go through your mentor program because you uh, you're like the best it's like the best advertisement like ever right now so no, but i mean it honestly like i i've seen patients before i came to your program and i done patients but i i still you you learned so much and i'm telling you it's it's you look at things differently and I think the more the better. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, well thank, thank you for Mavis. having me, Sarah. I really appreciate it. Have a great night and we'll talk later. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.